NVIDIA's universal AI in a humanoid robot. Neuralink is accused of illegal testing. Tesla has released a new product and the Japanese got an AI that quickly generates other superior AIs. This is madness, I tell you. And today, we're diving deep. But first, previously we announced a raffle with the grand prize of $50 in the form of a gift card and we got a winner. Watch this video to the end to find out who it was because maybe it was you. And stick around for more videos to participate in our next giveaways. All right, now let's get it. The Robotics Summit and Expo will be held in Boston in May this year. Boston Dynamics founder Mark Rybert is announced to speak, as well as lots of robots from Disney. We'll be sure to keep our eyes peeled, so subscribe to get the latest scoop. By the way, we have a full video on Rybert himself, where we delve into whether we should write off the pioneer of agile humanoid robots, or whether he still got it. Startup Aptronic has become the first humanoid robot developer to integrate its Apollo with NVIDIA's project Groot Universal AI. This will allow developers to use text, video, and human demonstrations as cues for the robot to complete tasks. It'll also teach it basic skills like coordination and dexterity. Instead of just repeating actions from the training data, the robot will be able to recognize the environment and predict what to do next to achieve its goal. If everything works as intended, we can expect stunning videos of the robot's new skills from Aptronic soon. Perhaps it will really start doing something useful at the Mercedes factory, where Aptronic has already put its name on the dotted line. By the way, Apollo has already learned to autonomously control a juicer and serve juice. When we talk about Apollo, it's a must to remember that it's characterized by modular design, safety when working near people, and, as developers say, human dexterity. Apollo can work on a single charge for up to four hours, after which you can simply replace the battery. By the way, Goldman Sachs predicts that the market for humanoid robots can reach $38 billion by 2035, and experts from other companies believe that about 14% of all jobs in manufacturing and automotive industry will be occupied by these creepy crawlers in the next four years. Do we have warehousing gurus on this channel? What do you guys think? Are these forecasts realistic? Let us know in the comments below. Just when we thought Neuralink is in the clear with the chip in its first volunteer, something unexpected jumped out of the woodwork. Earl Blumenauer, Democratic U.S. representative, decided that the FDA gave the company permission for human experiments too early and based on unclear grounds, ignoring the disturbing evidence of animal testing violations reported back in 2019. In other words, Congressman Blumenauer suspects the agency issued the authorization illegally, which means the implantation was also illegal. He is now demanding an explanation from the FDA. Specifically, Congressman Blumenauer cited Reuters reports describing employee complaints of cutting corners during animal experiments due to an intense schedule, causing unnecessary suffering and deaths of test monkeys. The employees were also concerned about possible problems with the quality of the experiments and the rigidity of the results. For its part, an FDA spokesperson said that during its review, the agency found no violations at Neuralink that could undermine the safety of the research. What do you think? Were there any irregularities? And if there were, what's a couple of monkeys for the greater good, right? Or is this a smear campaign on Musk because of whatever he's doing? And what he's doing is a lot. SpaceX has placed the new Starship on the launch pad for testing ahead of its fourth launch. If the pre-launch testing goes well and US officials promptly give the company permission for a new flight, we could see new videos of Starship in space as early as May. We're very much looking forward to it. What about you? 
Tesla's electric cars and humanoid robots will move to private 5G networks, which the company plans to build itself. The corresponding job openings appeared on Tesla's website. The networks will connect server infrastructure objects and terminal devices, which will be electric cars of all produced models, as well as Optimus. 5G will allow devices to move information faster, and by the way, Chinese electric cars are already actively using 5G, but the infrastructure is already in place in China. If you want to know more, check out the link in the description to see that video. As for Tesla's market leadership, in spite of competitors mostly from China already bypassing Tesla, Elon decided to bet on full self-driving. The yearly option now costs $12,000 and a monthly subscription costs $199. Not everyone dares to spend that kind of money, so the entrepreneur has issued two orders. First, Tesla employees who give out electric cars to customers are now required to install the latest version of FSD 12.3.1 on their cars and give them a test drive of its capabilities. Secondly, starting this week, all Tesla car owners no older than 2016 will be given FSD for free. Really, it's only for one month. Quote, almost no one has any idea how well FSD technology actually works with drivers behind the wheel. End quote. Such a generous gesture, is it not? Tesla Cybertruck owners have concluded that the company is preparing to add a wireless charging feature to the pickup truck. A special connector for connecting the wireless system is already there, but the circuit itself is not yet in place. Apparently, Tesla is focused on the development of wireless infrastructure. And by the way, Musk was more impressed with a robotic snake charging and connecting to the car, but now apparently the concept has changed a little bit. And last but not least, Tesla has released a Cybertruck-style sledgehammer. A total of 800 sledgehammers will be available through a referral program. Their purpose is apparently to test the Cybertruck's frame. OpenAI showed short films created by professionals using Sora artificial intelligence. The model is not yet available to the public, but a few lucky creatives got to try it out. Apparently, it's awesome. Sora generates video from static images and text descriptions. Moreover, the model almost got bogged down in another scandal associated with trading on copyrighted material without a license. OpenAI management at first tried to keep quiet, then said that it was publicly available in licensed data as well as videos obtained under a license agreement with Shutterstock. Now, OpenAI is rumored to be in active talks with Hollywood, trying to get them interested in the new AI. Do you think actors and artists will stand up to competition from AI? I'm betting my money on Lars Ulrich. Japanese startup Sakana AI has developed an algorithm that creates new AI model architectures in an evolutionary way. That is, it selects the best elements of existing models and assembles new, more efficient ones from them. The AI is then tested for viability and weeded out if it doesn't live up to expectations. This is a kind of a natural selection in the world of AI, when the model that has the best qualities of the sources or, if you will, parents, survives. The resulting models do not require additional training, which allows them to be created quickly and makes them highly profitable. This approach is not new. Evolutionary model fusion technology has existed before, but it relies heavily on the intuition and subject matter knowledge of those who use it. Sakana AI, on the other hand, promises a more systematic approach and the creation of the most efficient models possible. In tests of the evolutionary method, the researchers created a large Japanese-based language model capable of solving math problems and a large visual model. Both models showed high levels of performance on a number of standard tests, even though they were not pre-optimized for them. In general, soon new, more and more advanced AI models will appear like mushrooms after rain. What do you think about it? AI models, I mean, not mushrooms.
A company from Saudi Arabia, QSS AI and Robotics, has unveiled its new humanoid service robot, Sarah. She can both talk and avoid taboo topics such as politics to maintain decorum. To hedge against surprises, for sure, the company didn't add GPT, but developed its own language model. The robot speaks Arabic and English, successfully recognizes and interprets speech, and responds within the bounds of decency. Just our two cents, don't connect it to a Call of Duty server. Chinese company Lynx Dynamics is pumping out robots of various kinds at an impressive rate. It seems that only recently the startup rolled out a quadrupedal bot, making its first announcement followed by a humanoid robot, and now the strange bipedal bot P1, which obeys the kicks and attacks from engineers, nervously running on heavily rugged terrain. The developers shared that the algorithm controlling the robot's movement was not trained to walk on all types of terrain. Instead, engineers put the general principles of bipedal lock motion into it and saw how the robot would cope. The P1 is designed to test bipedal gait algorithms in a variety of environments, and perhaps its skills will then be transferred to the company's humanoid robot, CL1. We'll keep you guys updated. Remember we told you about an unusual concept from Expon Aerot, a six-wheeled electric SUV with a full-fledged aircraft in the trunk? At the time, many experts doubted the realization of the project, but the other day, it was revealed that the company has received permission to use its electric aircraft in China and their sale, complete with a car, and will begin in early 2025. The cost of this package will be approximately $150,000, or why not just maybe get a Porsche 911 GTS? A recent U.S. study found that most of the world's top artificial intelligence majors are Chinese. Almost half of the graduates in this field of research are from PRC. American students account for only 18%. To understand why this shocked American researchers, you have to realize that in 2019, for example, the situation was completely the opposite. And even the fact that as of today, the U.S. maintains its leadership in AI is not exactly comforting, as China-educated researchers have made a big contribution. If we go back to the numbers, the Chinese make up 38% of the top AI researchers working in the U.S., while Americans, 37%, which speaks volumes about the industry's heavy reliance on Chinese scientists. And by the way, if earlier the Chinese who were educated in America almost entirely preferred to stay there, now there is a trend to return to their homeland after their studies. AI specialists have become an important geopolitical resource, and PRC is doing everything to encourage them to work in China. To do so, the country plans to further strengthen support for science and attract foreign investment to achieve technological sovereignty. Thus, this year, the budget to support research projects in the field of high technology will be increased by 10% to $51.5 billion U.S. dollars. Financial support will be provided to companies that demonstrate good results in strategically important sectors of the Chinese economy. Among these areas are artificial intelligence, quantum technologies, space, and biotech. By the way, last year, Chinese authorities spent $458 billion to support basic scientific research, which corresponds to 2.6% of the country's GDP. If you want to see what the Chinese have already managed to achieve, check out the video we have for you in the description. Milad Shafi, a robotics engineer from Ecole Polytechnique de Lausanne, showed a video demonstrating a unified mobility policy for four-legged robots of any height, weight, and design. The discovery will help researchers and robot dog designers, but we're just enjoying the psychedelic spectacle, really. Japanese engineers are developing a method for robots to recognize continuous changes in the state of food and they're testing it on one of the oldest humanoid robots, PR2. The fact is that in the process of cooking, the appearance, shape, and properties of foodstuffs constantly change. Think scrambled eggs. Describing these changes with manual programming is too difficult, plus it's not cool to do it manually. What is needed nowadays is for a robot to be able to recognize and adapt to all the changes on its own thanks to the built-in AI. Therefore, researchers decided to teach the robot to recognize changes through spoken language. 
Using pre-trained large language models capable of taking in both text and image as inputs, the engineers also ranked the weight of each textual cue and performed black box optimization to achieve accurate recognition. All in all, the scientists say the method works, waiting to be implemented in humanoid robots so they can finally get to cooking. Well, all self-respecting robot dogs are showing new wonders of mobility. The turn has come to deeper robotics as well. The company explained that the robot dog's capabilities have been enhanced by improvements to the company's artificial intelligence system and updates to the robot software. The German Airspace Center, DLR for short, has released a new video of its humanoid robot, Neo David. Behind the video, it's reported that the team aims to bring the robot's capabilities closer to a human in terms of dynamics, dexterity, and strength. But how they're doing that, the engineers don't elaborate. You know, the Germans, they like to keep their cards close to their chest. Engineers from MIT decided to bestow robots with common sense using generative artificial intelligence. They used an approach in which the bot breaks down any tasks into smaller subtasks. And if something changes in the process, the robot doesn't start over, but picks the appropriate subtask from a library, similar to how GPT picks the most appropriate next word in a sentence. In this experiment, the developers mixed up the manipulator, preventing it from accomplishing the task at hand. And the robot, instead of returning to the starting point, recognized its work on the fly. So far, it's unclear from what was published how versatile this approach is, what training it requires, and how quickly it can be applied to other tasks. But like many others, the team is aiming to create universal AI, and, well, good luck to them. Intel and Microsoft have announced the launch of AI-enabled PCs. In fact, this means that on such PCs and laptops, Microsoft's AI Assistant Copilot runs locally rather than in the cloud. Such devices are known to have an AI NPU, a central processing unit CPU, and a graphics processing unit GPU, as well as Microsoft's Copilot service and a physical Copilot key on the keyboard. The companies have already announced that these are the computers of the future, or rather, early versions of them. Intel plans to make significant changes for the processor architecture and has already announced support for 300 new features aimed at optimizing the AI experience. It's expected that this, among other things, will significantly increase the interest of developers in creating new software. Also, Intel has set out for an ambitious goal of selling 100 million AI PCs by just 2025. And the Slovakian developer of the flying car Air Car Klein Vision sold the license for its production to a Chinese company, Hebei Zhangqing Flying Car Technology. The reason is simple. No one in Europe wanted to take on this production. This, in turn, also has a reason. In our opinion, it's the vague prospects for flying cars in the EU. There's no legislation, no infrastructure, and most importantly, no understanding of when it will actually appear. Meanwhile, in China, all of this is in the works. To be fair, it should be noted that the Chinese company is one of the founders of Klein Vision. As for the car itself, getting around on the ground, it's a regular petrol sedan with a 160 horsepower BMW engine. All of the flight equipment is foldable and even partially removable. The transformation takes a few minutes, but the air car needs a runway, making it much more difficult to use in the city. Production is reportedly set to begin soon, and we'll see if the car actually manages to compete with vertical takeoff and landing vehicles from Ehon and Xpeng. There's more, but we're out of time. So this is the part where we announce the winner of our previous giveaway. As always, to participate, you had to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. And B, answer the following question. According to the popular song, how many bicycles are there in Beijing? And the answer is, there are nine million bicycles in Beijing. There are nine million bicycles in Beijing. So if we turn on our random comment picker, we shall see that the $50 gift card goes to Anton9422. Congratulations, Anton. Please check if your email address is up to date on your YouTube page. If for some reason that is not an option, then please you contact us via the email address located in the description to redeem your gift card.
Thank you so much for participating, everybody. Anton, one more time, congratulations. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.